Hey everybody, it's Sarah with the Boutique Hub. Welcome to uh, three tips about merchandising. I would like to introduce myself so a lot of you are new. I am your Director of Partnerships and Education here at the Boutique Hub and merchandising is something that's extremely important to me. I've been very passionate about it ever since I started in retail back in 1993. I know, it ages me. Yes, that's when I started in retail. So. Uh, I own a store for many years and I'm very passionate about the art of merchandising and what it can do for your store, whether you're brick and mortar or online. And I think this is a very important time to bring that to everyone, you know, kind of increase our knowledge a little bit about merchandising this time of year as we're going into a transitional shift, right? From holidays into spring. So anyway, we're gonna jump in with three tips about merchandising and I just wanna say hi to, I see a lot of familiar names there so good to see you guys and uh, just so you know many of you have are enrolled in retail boot camp or have went through the course I go into merchandising in depth in the course in retail merch in, in of retail merchandising in retail boot camp the course is now open it's open till next week but uh, today I wanted to give you three of my um, main tips right and kind of go into it briefly because I feel so passionate that merchandising is not something that just happens it is a true science it's a psychology of how people move around and what entices them to buy and what makes them stop and look and, and touch and feel things. Now granted, you're not gonna touch and feel things on your, on, on your website, but it does get people to stop in their tracks, right? It does get people to make, make a move and pause and really look and start to get them to think, is this something that I want? Would this work for me? So let's dive in. Good morning, everybody. Thank you guys again for joining me. Um, for you that are jumping on a little bit late, I'm Sarah Burks. I'm the Director of Partnerships and Education I'm here for the Boutique Hub. I also teach Retail Boot Camp and Boutique Owner Basics with Ashley and do an awful lot of speaking. And one of the things that I really like to talk about is merchandising and moving inventory. Because those of you that have been in Retail Boot Camp know inventory is supposed to work with you, not against you, right? And a lot of us have a lot of t uh, cash tied up in our merchandise and we need to turn it into cash as quickly as possible. It's very important to keep that cash flowing. Right? Can I, can I get a positive thumbs up on that? Super important to get that merchandise in and out of the store as fast as you can. So today I have three tips for you. And for all of you that know me, it's probably gonna turn into more like six. But uh, anyway, I just wanna say, you guys have all been in merchandising. No matter if you think you're good at it or not, if you are a mom, give me a thumbs up. Who here does the grocery shopping or who here stocks your refrigerator. Yes, that's me, right? Anybody, anybody here uh, go to the refrigerator this morning to get whatever it is you want to get for breakfast? Guys, you don't even know it, but you were involved in merchandising at that moment, right? Kind of got to dumb it down sometimes and make yourself think, oh my gosh, wait, how is that possible? What is she talking about? Well, where do you put the milk in your refrigerator? You put the milk at the front, why? Because it has a short shelf life, it expires. So you don't ever wanna put the milk all the way to the back. What's the stuff that we find in the back? The stuff that can last forever, right? If you want your family or whoever comes to your house and uses your kitchen, if you want them to use that milk up and get it, when you bring it in, you wanna get it gone because it's gonna expire, you don't push it to the back. It has the best placement in your refrigerator of probably all of your products, right? That's because you need to move it fast. So that is just kind of simple 101 merchandising. You need to make sure you're thinking about the product placement in your store. Another thing I want you to think about, you know, when you go to Target or you go to Walmart or you go to your grocery store, the placement of products, it doesn't just happen. There's a science behind all of it. So we call that planogramming and you can look in. You can look that up. There's a whole uh, whole laundry list of items that go into planograms for store locations and, and displays. The beauty of your business is it's up to you. You don't get a planogram sent in the mail to you every weekend and have to have it precisely done exactly that way, right? The beauty of independent retailing is it's up to you. You can be as creative as you want to be. So I love that. I love us. Uh, telling a story through the merchandising because you want to entice people to react and, and buy from you because you're different than everybody else. Most targets in our area are set up the exact same way. 
geographically it ranges a little bit, Kohl's, uh, Walmart, things like that. Those displays don't just happen because the manager came in and said, oh, I'd like to do this. They're told by higher ups who are told by higher ups. Not you guys, you guys get the creativity to do it on your own. So let's jump into three tips to make you the very best merchandisers possible. And again, we go into this in way more depth than Retail Bootcamp. I'm very passionate about this, but I think it's really important today as you're transitioning from coming off the holiday season into spring that you start focusing on this a little bit. So tip number one, inspiration. Make sure when you set out with a merchandising plan that you are inspired by something. It needs to be uh, triggered by an end result that you want to have, right? Don't just start throwing things out on the wall or don't think on, on shelves or table displays or whatever it is, or just onto your website without a return on investment in mind, right? Is there a promotion you wanna run? Are you being bombarded with new merchandise? Has the UPS driver like surprised you lately and you're sitting on a ton of new merchandise thing that you hadn't really planned on? Do you need cash flow quickly, right? Those, these are just some things that might entice you or inspire you in your merchandising. Is there an event coming up in your community? You know, is it, especially in the fall, Friday night football games, or maybe, you know, we're starting to think graduation dresses, Mother's Day outfits, things like that. What is happening in the world, what is happening in your community that is going to inspire you on how you're going to merchandise and display your items, right? A lot of this depends on the collections that you've received at this time. But nonetheless, I really want you to focus in on, on a plan, right? Get an idea on what you're wanting to encourage and entice and inspire your customers with. Okay, so um, what is the result you're wanting to do? If you finish with this new layout plan or you're a new display and you say, okay, yep, that's fine. Odds are it's not fine. Odds are you need to go back and figure it out and redo it. If you're not inspired, if your staff's not inspired by it, if they're not excited by the end result, it's not good enough. Okay, so a lot of times you get in a bind, you're like, oh, I have to re-merchandise a store. Let's let's do this. Let's let's do, you know, let's do a table display here. Let's do you know face outs, waterfall on the over here. That's fine. It's fine. It's gonna be great. If it doesn't inspire you or it doesn't inspire your staff, you need more, right? Because at the end of the day, we're trying to stand out from everybody else. So what is that inspiration going to come from? It's going to come from the collections of merchandise that you've brought in, right? It's going to, t you wanna tell a story to your customers. You wanna get them to pause and stop and interact. You wanna get them to stay on your website. You wanna get them to stay in your store. Number one rule of um, merchandising is getting people to spend more time with you. The more time they spend in your store, the more time they spend on your website, the more cash that you get in your, in your register. Who doesn't like that, right? Absolutely. When you bring, when, think about it yourself. When you shop, what makes you turn around and leave? What makes you jump off that page and go to somebody else's website? What are those things that drive you crazy about shopping? What are some of them? Messy stores, right? Dirty racks, things not hung on hangers properly, Flat lays on a website that are too confusing, you're not really sure what they're selling. So many items on a flat lay that you're not sure if they're selling the shoes or the shorts, right? What else drives you crazy? There's no, there's no story, there's no tra like line of traffic of what you're supposed to be following in the store, right? One messes, absolutely crowds, too close of quarters. I'm a big, big believer that uh, less is more when it comes to merchandising. Being able to think through the process and see items, and this gets me into number two, tip number two, thinking like the customer, but I'll jump into that right now. When you merchandise, you have to think like the customer. What are the headaches that customers have? They're in a hurry. They're not blessed with the knowledge of retail and clothing and what goes with what, like we are, right? We're, that's our thing, that's our gift, right? They are confused. They want help. They want almost a, a step-by-step -step instruction when they shop. What's gonna go with what? Especially when it's gift giving, right? Because that's always a very stressful time. So I highly recommend you tell a story with your merchandising. So you've been inspired by a plan that that's what you wanna do. That's the information that you wanna provide. That's the merchandise you wanna showcase, right? This is a traffic pattern you want your customers to follow, whether it's online or in store. So that's number one, your inspiration behind what you're going to do. 
Now tip number two is you have to make sure you're thinking like the customer. Make sure what you're putting out there falls into their needs, right? Again, customers are in a hurry. They don't have time to dig. When I walk into I, when I walk into TJ Maxx, I'm instantly stressed because there's so much there. Everything is a mess. I have to dig. You own a boutique. You don't want people to have to dig. You want people to be inspired and feel comfortable and want to mill around and spend more time and see something over here that draws that is drawing their eye and yet their feet are going to follow. Right? You want to introduce them to a table display that has a number of different things on it that that want them you want them to touch and feel it and be inspired and think oh my gosh I can totally see that in my house I need that in my closet right you want to think and tackle some of their main pain points the time do can you tell a story in your merchandise that they can immediately be drawn to something and be excited about it or do they have to dig through everything to be excited about it right so improve that customer experience. I'm a big one on improving your product, making sure your product is quality, but that experience has to be quality. Again, people's time is very, very precious, and you want to make sure that you are not pulling them for a full hour to find that one or two things they want. This is a reason why I'm not a huge fan of the color story system, right? Like my basics, my basic tank tops or black pants, things like that, having those in an area, that's fine. But an orange wall, a purple wall, I don't get that. And I, I, I feel like that had its time and it had its place, but I feel some of those stores that um, kind of hung their hat on that color story situation and just put everything that was red in one spot, everything that was orange in another spot, they're not around anymore. So unless you have customers specifically coming in asking for an orange shirt, make that orange shirt relevant. Put it back with your khakis or your browns or your navies or whatever it is. Make it a grouping, make it a collection, make it tell a story because nobody's gonna walk around in an orange shirt, orange pants, orange scarf, right? So that's just confusing to the customer. Unless you are going with basics. Again, if you're going with basics, I get it. Like some of those just basic white tank tops that are those go-to items. If you have some of those basics in an area, that I get. But for the most part, when people come in, they want to be inspired. They want to feel like they're going to fit in. They want to be noticed when they walk back out your door. They shop with you because of the knowledge that you have. So in that merchandising, I urge you, if you don't have some body forms, now granted, mannequins are expensive and mannequins are hard to work with, but invest in some body forms. Basically what those are is just the bodice, right? And you can put dresses on them, you can put you can put full on outfits on them, but you can tell a story there, right? You can even put hats on them. I love the body forms because they can go up in height, you can give the dimension, you can make a person's eye go up and down, and you can totally tell a story. I'm, I'm a big believer in a table display with some jeans and things laid out onto the table and you three or three mannequins in the back, a tall, a medium, and a short that tells that story and gets people to sit there and look at the whole collection as a whole, right? When I had my store, I had tons of customers that bought whatever the mannequin had on. So the mannequin was dressed head to toe. It gave that person, the shopper, confidence that they knew they could put that outfit together and it was gonna look good. Again, guys, think like the customer. A lot of your customers trust you to educate them, which is a great thing. That's why they shop with you. So don't do them wrong, right? Help them be that silent seller in your merchandising because some people like space. Some people don't want you to come up and say, this goes with this and you can do this and this and this and this and da 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 da. And all of a sudden after the second this, they've got the deer in the headlights glossed over look because they're just confused, right? But if they can take their own time, look at it on the mannequin, see how it works with those other transition pieces that you've laid on the table display or you have court, um, right next to it on the racks, it makes sense to them and they feel confident in it. And they feel confident they can take that home and put it in their closet and wear it. Now this on online is the exact same thing. I'm a big believer in your flat lays with your collections, right? But don't overdo it. I'm a big believer in collections on your websites to make it easier. Merchandising as far as game day collections, wedding guest collections, um, spring must haves, things like that, that make a shopper think, this is what I'm looking for. I'm going on a trip, I'm going on a, to a beach vacation. So I like to go and click on the website that says, 
vacation wear, whatever it is. Um, that helps me feel like my shopping is gonna be more selective. I'm in the right spot, right? It helps, it's that silent seller. It puts it all organized, solves my problem of time. It solves my problem of feeling like I'm jumping around, going, having to dig for things. I love it. Mary says, put it together for them and it makes their life easier. Oh my gosh, absolutely. I love the easy button. For those of you that have went through retail bootcamp, I'm a big believer in easy buttons because we're all very, very, very busy people, right? Very limited on our time. So again, the longer your customers are in your store, the longer they are going to look around and the more money they're gonna spend. So this, again, this is on your website as well as your social media, as well as in your store. So big, big no-no. And this is, we go, like I said, we go into this a ton in retail bootcamp, but I feel like this is very important to talk about because I've seen a few threads about how your store is layout, laid out. Please pay attention to where your, your traffic patterns are in your store and I guarantee you that your customers do not like to come in and immediately go left. The biggest honey, honey holes in your store are going to be to the right. So please don't push your, put your cash wrap immediately inside the front door at the right because that's a, dead, that's a space where people wanna buy from, right? And if you put your cash wrap right there, it makes people feel like they're supposed to come in and stop. And that's, that's where they're gonna purchase and buy something or else they're gonna turn around and leave. So I'm a big one on speed bumps. I'm a big one, which would be like getting them to stop, right? To get them to stop, change directions. I'm a big one, the eye level, the buy level. You know, you, I'm a huge believer in waterfall racks, uh, face outs on your, on your walls. Basically what I'm talking about is, I'm talking about um, not just bars going across the walls, right? You wanna have some face outs that like come away from the wall that you can show again with a body form on them, just a, like a, just a torso with the, the hook on them that you can put a shirt, a vest, a jacket, a scarf, layer it all up, right? And below that you can hang the shorts or the whatever's going to go with it. So you can tell a story in your visual merchandising. Gives people confidence, it makes people inspired. People are, get excited and think, I'm gonna wear that to graduation. I'm gonna wear that on a date this weekend, whatever it is. So you want them to look at something and put themselves in that outfit in a, in a certain um, lifestyle that's gonna entice them to buy. Okay, so tip number one was inspiration. Tip number two is think like the customer. Tip number three is my biggest, biggest pet peeve. I'm always asked, always asked in retail bootcamp, I'm asked in this group all the time, is what do I do with old inventory? And I my immediately come back and say, is it old? Who says it's old? How do you know it's old? Okay, granted, some of you guys have stuff that is, you know, growing, growing, literally growing on your hangers. Yes, I get it. But is it old to you? Is it old to your staff because it came in three months ago? Does that mean it's old to your customers? Can I get an amen on that one? I know it's like radio silence right now. What I wanted you to understand and really think about is just because you're over it doesn't mean your customers are over it. Again, go back to that refrigerator example I talked about this morning. What happens to those leftovers? What happens to that stuff that gets pushed to the back of your refrigerator? People forget about it. Your kids are like, there's nothing to eat here. And you're like, yeah, there is. There's so much food in that refrigerator. Girl, just get in there, open it up. Take a lid off the, the container and you're gonna find gold. Well, what did I just ask my kids to do? One, go dig in the refrigerator. Nobody wants to do that, right? They're hungry. They wanna open the doors and find some food. They don't wanna go dig for anything. So there could be amazing things back there, but nobody's gonna find it. There could be amazing things in your store, but when you hide them away and put them in bad spots and like cover them up and all this stuff, put them in a basket on the bottom, in the back corner of your store underneath the rack of pants, and you're like, gosh, we have not sold all those scarves. Why haven't we sold those socks? And like somebody goes, well, where are they? I don't even know where they're at. Eye levels, buy level, making it new again. Your customers really have no idea how long it's been there. And I bet for all of my more legacy boutique owners here that have been in business for quite a while, even if you've been in business for two, a year, two years, you guys can attest to this. I guarantee you, you have re-merchandised your store at some point in time, 
made, brought something, even if it was a layering piece, brought something up front and center, put it on a body form, walked away from it, and a customer walks in and says, oh my gosh, how long have you had that? That's brand new, I love it, I've gotta have that. And you just instantly are like, absolutely, you bet, we just got that in just yesterday. When the truth is, it's like six, eight, 10 months old, right? You've just made it new again. So my tip number three about merchandising is don't get discouraged over merchandise that sits. You have got to be excited about it. You have got to make it new again or your customers are going to think it's old and your customers aren't even going to find it. So je I, yeah, absolutely. We've all done it. Man, I, we would laugh about this all the time in the store, but making it new again, nobody knows it's, nobody knows it's old. And let's be honest, how many things do you have in your closet that are over three months old and you still wear them, right? They're still relevant. Absolutely. No, maybe super, super trendy things you've ditched, you've gotten rid of, but make it new again. Be excited about it. Show your customers. The more you show, the more you sell, right? If it is stuck on page 64 of your website, girl, nobody's going to find it, right? If you have got a crap ton of cash tied up in, let's see right now, black leggings, black leggings you're transitioning into spring of course those of you that are in the winter you're still selling those things but if you have that stuff transition pieces right get those out there make sure they're involved in whatever it is you're selling right don't just push them back because you feel like well people aren't always buying black leggings right now well if you're saying that then they definitely aren't buying black leggings anymore but if you have a lot of money tied up in cash you better figure out a way to get those turned into cash right now because I guarantee you, the longer they live in your store, the less valuable they are. So please, on my tip number three, we talk a ton about this in Retail Bootcamp, a ton about life cycle of product. Understand your life cycle. Understand when it's about to reach its expiration date so that milk that got pushed all the way back to the back end of your refrigerator, you dang sure better get it out and put it back where it's supposed to go so people use it and can get its life out of it before it's no good anymore, right? Yes, oh my gosh, the liquid legging that went crazy and then died. Okay, if you've got a trend, and I, I joke because I say fidget spinners, right? If you're sitting on a bunch of inventory of fidget spinners, yeah, you probably missed the boat on that. Wait long enough and it'll come back, but I'm not an advocate for that. But what I'm telling you is just because something's been in your store for, for, for three months, you cannot lose the excitement about it because the customer coming in does not know when you got it in the first place, right? Layering pieces, transition pieces, cardigans, whatever it is, you might be kind of over it, but, if, but your customer still needs to see it, right? If you pass over it, then your customer is going to pass over it. What is the first a, a personal thing here in your all's closet, right? You guys went in your closet and got dressed this morning, and I guarantee you, you have these things that you're like, ugh, I haven't worn that in a long time, right? Well, think about your sales staff and think about yourself when you're working with customers. Is there something in the on the sales floor that you haven't sold in a long time? If you haven't sold it, ask yourself, why haven't I sold it? Is it a crappy fit? Is it a bad color? Does the vendor just not, did they ship it on the, at a wrong time? What's the reason it's still sitting there? And if you can tell yourself honestly that there's nothing wrong with it, it's just been here for a few months, then girl, get excited about it. Make it new again. Throw it on, do another flat lay on it, ask one of your um, employees to throw it on for the day, rearrange it, whatever you've gotta do, re photograph it. Make it new again, get excited about it. Because if you're excited about it, your customers are gonna get excited about it. So that leads me into, can I just say tip 3.2 because I'm not supposed to go, no. I, anyway, you knew I was gonna do more than three tips. Um, I feel like I've given you about seven so far. But how often should you redo your displays? This is another question I get asked an awful lot of times. If you're thinking about, um, your store, say we're talking about a brick and mortar store and you've got table displays throughout the store, right? You need to be redoing those weekly. I'm a big believer in that. Big believer in weekly. I, I feel like if you get complacent with it, one, hopefully they start to look, the displays start to look kind of 
disheveled and picked over in a week, right? Because we hope your customers are buying off of them. If you've done it right, they're buying off of them, right? So re making a, a, a commitment to redoing your displays every week, and I, I even mean your walls, right? How you're merchandising your walls. Redo those often because the more it changes, the more people keep coming back. Think about your Facebook profile picture. How many people have, if you haven't changed your fro, uh, Facebook profile picture in about six months, how many people are liking that currently? Nobody, very few people. Now, if you change your profile picture today, I guarantee you, you will have a bunch of new likes on it before this video is over today, right? Because it's new. It's common sense, guys. Give them newness, give them freshness. Nobody wants to see the same thing over and over again. There, psychologically, if you go into a store that you haven't been into for, for two weeks or for two months, and they have the exact same thing there, right, that they did two months ago, two months ago, oh my gosh, that's before Christmas, that would be bad. <laughs> if you go in there now, the middle of January, and then you go in the middle of February and it's still the same stuff, immediately what do you think? think this store's old, it doesn't have anything new, they're boring, I don't want to shop here, right? Now if you come back and everything's new again, and then all of a sudden a Facebook Live video comes on or they do a tour through their store or through their warehouse, or they send you an email and all these, all these things you're seeing are completely different than what you saw the last time, you're like, holy smokes, I need to get in there. That place is on fire. If I don't get it now, I'm not going to get it. It's that sense of urgency, right? That fear of missing out. And oh my gosh, us women, we all suffer from that. Yes. And you can totally do this online. You can totally do this online. That, that, that new arrivals page, that the same stuff that says new arrivals, that said new arrivals in September, it's not new arrivals anymore, right? We've got to shuffle these things around. We've got to make them new again. That basically, you, what I'm saying about reinventing those things or reintroducing those things if you take the same picture you took, say, in the fall, in the fall foliage outside with this blanket scarf on, and you, you take that exact picture and now put it back on new arrivals in January as a winter-type scarf, no. Get outside. Take a new picture in the snow, whatever it is. Make that thing relevant today because people are looking at it right now, and people are not surrounded by fall foliage right now. They're, su they're surrounded by winter stuff right now. So make it relevant now. Does that make sense? All right, let's see. How could you do this if you were online only? Okay, Jennifer, that was an um, example just like that. Remerchandise those layouts, right? Make new collections, bring new things front and center, but mostly re-photograph things. I know that's time consuming and I know it can be, but at the same time, your inventory is not getting any younger. It's not gonna get better with age. It's not like wine at all. It ages and it grows, right? We have got to reintroduce it. We've got to stay aggressive and we've got to stay excited about our merchandise because heck, we bought it for a reason. We bought it to sell it. We didn't buy it to sit on it. So the faster we can turn that back into cash, the better we can, now we can go take that cash and reinvest it again, right? But if we don't merchandise properly, we potentially will, nobody will know about the product. Therefore, it loses its life cycle and it loses its value. So those are my three tips. Those are my three tips. One, merchandising, whatever you do, have an inspiration behind it. Have a, have a return on investment that you're in, expecting, right? That way you can measure, am I doing a good job or do I stink at merchandising? Is this one of my gifts or do I need to go have somebody else do it, right? Because it's not for just everybody. Guys, there are people that have a God-given gift to make things pretty. They can make anything beautiful and they can make anything exciting and draw anybody to it. We all know that. I'm sure you guys have all been to people's homes or into stores and you've looked around and thought, oh my gosh, there's so much opportunity here. Or you've, you've looked at things and just like, I don't even know where to begin. And it's okay. We're not at all equipped to be excellent at everything. So have a way to measure is your merchandising turning into cash is your merchandising making people stop are they touching things are they engaging in things are they trying things on is there an area in your store that nobody goes to 
make sure whatever you're doing, you're merchandising, you're inspired with a design idea in mind, right? What are you hoping to get out of this? And then measure that. Did I achieve it? Okay. Tip two, think like the customer. What are their migraine problems and what are you solving for them? Make sure your merchandising works that way, right? Make sure that your merchandising encourages your shoppers to stay in the store and buy with you and have confidence that you're giving them something that they're gonna go out and look like a million dollars in and they're going to be able to use. And they trust the fact that that clothing line that you're in, in, you know, encouraging them to try on is gonna fit their body and work with them. They're not gonna have to maybe, if they're, they're very busy moms, maybe they can just literally throw that thing in the washer and dryer and wear it again. That fits into their cycle, right? Make sure that the merchandising that you're offering them is what they need. If they're busy people, if they're coming in with strollers, make sure your racks aren't too tight, right? All these kind of things. If, they're, if, they're, if you're in an area where people don't like to be interacted with a ton, make sure you have excellent signage. Make sure your, your sizes are where they need to be. This was a big one. This is maybe tip seven. But I'm a firm believer in straightened racks. Ugh. Nothing ticks me off more than if I'm in a store and I love the look of something and I go and look for it. And I'm like, ah, crap, no medium. Okay, fine. And then I go and walk over three racks later and there's the medium. Well, luckily I found it. Sometimes I wouldn't, right? And if you want to make sure your customers are satisfied quickly, if you're a salesperson, you want to know you can go to that rack and find the small, the medium, the large, the extra large, whatever it is. If you're in a look at a whole run of jeans, you want to make sure all those sizes are together in an order. So not only can that customer find them, but you or your sales staff can find them quickly so you can show them. Because earlier in the video I said, the more you show, the more they'll buy, right? You can't buy something you don't see. So making sure you're thinking like the customer, solving their problems, making sure it makes sense, making sure it inspires them. Training girls to do this is harder than I ever imagined. Courtney, I agree. Training girls to straighten is hard. I would tell you in our store, you did not get to do displays until you learned how to straighten. You didn't get to actually wait on customers until you learned how to straighten. We were pretty hardcore. We were trained by the best of the best, but displays was an honor. It was a reward, right? You had to earn that privilege. Waiting on customers is a privilege because not just you couldn't just turn anybody off with or onto our customers. We wanted our customers to have the best of the best. Knowing where your product is quickly, we did a lot of, um, I'm gonna go on a tangent here, and um, but we would do a lot of training in our stores and a lot of testing and a lot of, um, you know, kind of just fake customers and say, okay, a customer A came in and she's looking for a wedding outfit and she's a size 20 or she's a size two and she hates her arms and she has short blonde hair and she's 65, go find an outfit. And we would give them a certain amount of time and we would, we'd test them on that, right? They, in order for them to do that, they had to know where absolutely everything was in the store and they had to be able to go grab it quickly, right? Because this 60 some year old lady was impatient and she didn't want to wait, right? So. We would role play a lot in the store, but we were big on straightening and you had to get good at straightening. And we'd walk by after the girl got a rack straightened and we'd mess it all up and we'd come back and we'd say, are you sure you got that? You know, or we'd look through it and we'd say, okay, nope, those pants are still unzipped backwards on the hang pant hanger. They don't match everything else. We were very um, attentive to detail and we expected them to be too. And I know it's hard, but you have got to be diligent in your training with your with your staff, right? You can't just tell them once and assume they get it because it is an art and your customers deserve that. Your customers deserve it. That's why they come to you versus go to the mall. So that's a whole nother thing. We get a into that a ton in retail boot camp as well. Training your staff, getting them to buy into what you're selling as far as your uh, mission behind your business. But anyway, we can, that's a whole nother, whole nother video, whole nother course. Um, so, Tip number two, think like the customer. Solve that migraine problem for them. Have your merchandising tell a story. Have your merchandise speak to them. Your merchandising speak to them without you having to interrupt and bother them. Because how many people come in and they're on their phone and are they really on their phone? Or are they just saying, I don't want to be bothered and they're looking around. But yet, they're inspired by this whole display. They're inspired by the collection. They're inspired by the 
the image that it sets off in their mind that they can actually see themselves out to dinner at a restaurant in this or going to the park with their kids in this, right? Love it. And number three, make it new again. Don't get bored with it. If you get bored with it, they get bored with it. Well, let me back up. If you get bored with it, your staff gets bored with it. If your staff gets bored with it, you're, you know your customers get bored with it, right? So be excited about the inventory that you have. I mean, my gosh, you bought it to begin with. You bought it to sell it. So let's make sure we stay excited and we, we do sell it. Huge, 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 huge. Okay, don't let it get pushed off to the back. Don't let it get pushed into a basket under a bunch of pants that nobody even knows is there. Eye level is buy level. Make sure you're making that person's eye move across your walls. Make sure you get them moving up and down so they see everything, right? You can do that with colors and patterns and props. I'm a big one, big one for props. Okay, that's a whole nother thing too. Like I said, we go into this a ton in retail boot camp, and I get so passionate about this. I get so passionate about um, people understanding or having a good idea on filling their space with things that entice people, and props play such a huge role in that. And plus, Props props are not something you have to actually go out and buy. Sometimes you can just collect those kind of things, right? And they are a filler of space versus filling that with inventory that you are paying for that you might not need. That goes into inventory turn and open to buy plans and making sure you know how much inventory to have on hand at what time to satisfy your sales goals. But again, like I said, that's retail boot camp. Now, merchandising. Those are the three things we want to talk about. So in Inspiration, think like the customer, and make it new again. Stop, take a note of how your, your customers move throughout your site, your, in, your website, throughout your store. Where are they stopping? Where are they not? What are they touching? What are they not? Where are your dead spaces? Where are your hot selling spaces? Be mindful of these kind of things in your merchandising, guys, and I promise you, your inventory will turn around. One last thing. We talk, like I said, we talk a lot about this in retail boot camp. And we had a um, a student in retail boot camp last year come in, do right after our merchandise live call with her, and she wrote back to Ashley and I put a thread in the private group, and she said, "Unbelievable day, had the very best day of my entire year today," and it was because she re merchandised her store. She made things new again. All those things she thought were dead, she brought them back out, she re-merchandised them, she layered them differently, she reintroduced them to her customers with excitement and sold through more stuff than she had all year, right? That was her best day. Awesome, mind blown, not rocket science. But that was a huge win for her, right? And it was something that she would just bring out the new merchandise. She'd get something new in and she'd present that to the customer. And that's what she was excited about. Then the next UPS truck would come in and she'd present that stuff to them. But the bottom line is she wasn't selling through 100% of it, right? So that stuff that sat back, she lost excitement about and assumed her customers only wanted the brand new shipped this week, today items. How many of you guys have not seen the brand new new arrivals from your favorite boutiques that you also shop at recently? A lot, a lot of you guys, because you're so busy working. You're so busy investing into education for your own business. You're so busy with your families, doing all these kind of things. But when you do have time and you wanna go shopping, you're gonna go, out, you're gonna go to a, a store and you're gonna look and see what they have, right? That's the new stuff to you. You have not seen the other stuff. So just because something came in two weeks ago, two months ago, it might still be very relevant to you. You don't always know the exact shoes your, your shoppers are, are walking in, right? You don't know what they're dealing with. You don't know what their personal needs are all the time. You have an assumption, but you don't always know, right? So be excited about things. Make it new again. Make it enticing for them right? And you will turn your inventory quicker, which means more cash, which means you can turn back and invest the set amount of cash into inventory. But bottom line is, guys, you're, you do what you set out to do in your business, which I hope was to make money because that's what retailing is all about. Nobody decides to open their own clothing store to lose money. No, you want to take money home. You want to pay yourself and we want you to pay yourself also. So there you go. Those are my three tips for today. I hope you guys all learned something. 